We know Jesse Green, one of our international young prophets. She, she was in Huntington Beach, California. And California had brutal lockdowns. And you know what they said to them? They said, you, if you gather a few, you cannot sing. Whew. You know why? Because the devil's terrified when you open your mouth and start singing. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand to bind kings with chains and nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgments that have been written. This privilege, this honor have all his saints. That's us, guys. You don't have to die and get in a stained glass window to be a saint. Take that crown off, Vashti. We are the saints. So they decided to go out and have, a, have worship on Huntington Beach. People started hearing the sound in their homes. They started hearing the sound out on the beaches. Hundreds of people started coming. Hundreds of people started getting saved. When they'd give their hearts to Jesus, they'd take them straight out to the cold Pacific Ocean and baptize them. Somebody say boomerang. People that never would have darkened the doors of a church were getting saved on a beach with a worship band that said, we will sing. And it boomeranged back on the enemy's head. Let me tell you about a revival that's happening right now. Every single night. In a place called Bourbon Street. In the city of New Orleans. I know most of the people up here are too holy to even know what that is. Probably the biggest party street in America. All kinds of sin, debauchery is celebrated on that street. I won't go into the details, but y'all fill in the blanks. If it's sin, it's happening on Bourbon Street. Well, there was a bar owner down there, and he was having a personal crisis. He took some time off. When he went away, he had an encounter with Jesus, gave his heart to the Lord. A bar owner. Can, a, can Jesus save a bar owner? So he decided, you know what? I'm going to have to go back and sell my bar. And Jesus said, no, wait. I have need of your bar. See all those religious spirits just rippling on out of here. <laughs> he said, no, wait, I have need of your bar. So he went back. He changed the name of his bar to Sinners and Saints. And he hired a guy named Chris Burns, who's an amazing worship leader, to come in. And different worship leaders, but mostly it's Chris Burns, comes in on Bourbon Street in this bar and plays worship music. And it spills out of the doors onto the streets. And people are walking down the street, drunk, bombed out of their mind, high as, high as a kite. They hear this unusual sound. They stumble into a bar. They start coming into a different atmosphere. They hear the gospel preached. They're instantly sobered. They give their heart to Jesus. And guess what? That little platform where they used to have girls come up and dance. Everybody etch a sketch and don't visualize, okay? They'd have girls come up on this platform. Now they've got a baptismal tank. And when the people give their hearts to Jesus, they march them straight up on top of that platform and they put them in the baptismal tank and they give their hearts to Jesus. Somebody say boomerang. Come on, we got to understand what God is doing today. Let me give you one more. We've got a friend by the name of Robbie Dawkins. How many know Robbie? Anybody here know Robbie? He's an amazing man. And for years and years, um, he and his family lived in the south side of Chicago, basically the murder capital of America. And you know what they would do? They had, a, they had a church that was a praying church, a believing church, a mobilized church. And every time they had a police radio that they all had in their homes. And whenever they would hear of a crime, a murder, a rape, a violent crime, they would immediately mobilize and go to the very spot of that crime, and they'd start preaching the gospel until they get four or five people saved, four or five people healed, four or five people delivered. And their, and their motto is, we're going to make the devil pay. So picture it. They get a call. They hear it on the police radio that somebody's been murdered down at the corner of whatever. They immediately mobilize. They take a team down there. And after the police have carried the body away and there's all these people standing around looking, they start stepping up. And they start talking to people about salvation. They start talking to people about their eternal souls. And when they give an altar call, they expect to get four or five people saved. And every time the devil takes somebody's life, they go down there and they deliver four or five people into eternal life. Come on, we got to start getting a boomerang 
giving mentality and we got to start believing that our job is to make the devil pay. I just want you to get a different vision. The enemy thought he'd shut us down and shut us up. What are we going to do? We're going to make the devil pay. Boomerang. I am not advocating physical violence. But I believe that the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I believe that we're going to see some incredible boomerangs that are going to happen. I believe that God's going to teach us about making decrees. And I believe that we're going to see the overthrowing of Haman and his ten sons. Now, in the book of Esther, if you read chapter 9, you find out that on the very day that this thing was supposed to happen, this massacre, instead God gave power to his people over those that hated them. And there was violence in the streets. There was, uh, there was uh, an overturning and an overthrowing. We are not going to practice physical violence, but we're going to know how to stand up. We're going to know how to let our voices be heard. We're going to know how to love people, even if they espouse things that we hate. We're going to know how to love them with a violent love that causes them to experience the love of Christ. How many, how many are here because you experience the love of Christ? Amen? And so I believe that in this season of time that there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be shaken in our cities. And we're going to have to know how to watch and how to pray. We're going to have to know how to position ourselves. Because what, what is coming is an upheaval of systems. Guess what? When Roe versus Wade got overturned, people didn't just say, dog on it. How many know they're strategizing? How many know every time something gets uncovered, the enemy's going to strategize how to spin it? There's false narratives, but God's going to begin to bring a clarity and overthrow those things. Now, so if you want to maybe give a definition to what this is, of course we know the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, 10. But Jesus said, I've come that I might give you life. And life more abundantly. How many understand more abundantly? That's the life in the glory. That's life in victory. That's life in no matter what you're facing, you live above and not beneath. That's life free from depression, free from oppression, free from confusion. Come on, free from all the stuff the enemy's been bombarding on your minds recently. I'm telling you, we are going to step into knowing how to live every single day in abundant life. That phrase, abundant life in the Greek, means superior in quality and super abundant in quantity. Exceedingly above and beyond. It means more. Everybody say more. And then it says this, and more and more. That's in the definition. More and more and more. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give you life that is more and more and more. That's what we're shooting for, not just more money. Come on, guys. Can we think higher than that? When we see our kids turning around and divine reversing and coming back to their calling, coming back to their destiny. 